Yeah, I mean, it seems, seems pretty gloves. good. Um, we actually have another match now for you guys. Joe Lassette with Blue White Miracles, who we featured earlier, versus Nathan Groves, Groves playing Rob Delver. Uh, looks like these guys are in game two. Joe Lassette has taken game one. Which, I'm a, Miracles is my deck, my oh, legacy deck. I love it. It does seem like your speed. A lot it of islands. Absolutely my speed. And uh, I play the I play the Reed Duke Land Tax version. I've been so what's your loving call it. on that volcanic island? Do you think that's real? Do you think that's beta, or do you think that's sharpie? It looks sharpie to I'm me. I'm gonna go with sharpie <laughs> too. But I don't mind a sharpie. If anyone's played Commander against me, they know I, I love a good sharpieing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting. I uh, I actually tweeted a Will of the Wisp that I found that was sharpie. It was a revised Will of the Wisp from you know years ago that I must have still just had floating around in my collection. I'm like, hey, look at this. Found a Sharpie Will of the Wisp. Uh, Nathan's a little uh, color restricted here with Rug Delver. One of the weakest aspects of Rug Delver is its mana base. Sometimes it just kills itself. Uh, and Joe is going to play around those wastelands as much as he can, which, because he's playing a two-color blue-white deck, is quite well. Yeah. And that's one of the... One of the uh, Big advantage is to just sticking with a two-color deck in Legacy. I, uh, I definitely like that, especially the land tax version that I play. It plays a lot of extra basics just for the land tax, so that's not the version Joe's playing here. How often do you get to play? You're not very game. often. I mean, I most of my uh, actually all of my my experience playing is just with friends. You know, more play sure. testing than uh, than actual tournaments. I just don't get to play very often at all. Uh, in, in tournaments because the weekends that I have available to, don't, to uh, devote to magic, here I yeah. am in the booth. So well, That's going to be a force of will pitching spell pierce to counter counterbalance. Good good thing for Nathan because a blind counterbalance is actually pretty dangerous against Rugged Elder. The natural low casting cost of so many of the cards will just accidentally catch him. Yeah. So Joe's going to fetch again now. I'm curious where, where he's going with this. Imagine he has to get an island. Oh, we got a. Uh, he's got no white mana unless he has another fetch land, and he's burned two flooded strands, so. Yeah, interesting. Um, he's trying to build up to a cryptic command, maybe? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> relic of Relic. An excellent card against Rug Delver because one of the most problematic creatures for the blue white decks is Nimble Mongoose, and Relic of Progenitus handles it nicely. It also handles that guy. Yeah, Grim Lava Master, not too happy to see a Relic of Progenitus Speak on the other of side. of the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> relic, so good that uh, that it's main decked in uh, Reed Duke's version, mm -hmm. not in this particular version. Uh, he actually main decks two <laughs> Relics, uh, Reed Duke does. Two on the board here for Joe Lossette. I'm gonna get it right. <laughs> There's a second counterbalance from Joe. Does Nathan have another Force of Will? No. Nope. Here's he has a Pyroblast in him, yep. but uh, he's gonna have to not cast it here. It's he's gonna, gonna be have tricky. To, yeah, he's gonna have to uh, try to get him. It's very awkward because of that fetch land. Even if he runs a test spell to see if the counterbalance has a one on top, Joe can go for it again with the Marsh Blast. Yeah. Actually, he could even pop the Relic of Progenitus to just get a new fresh card. Yep. So A lot of ways to get a fresh card on top for Joe. Joe's hand appears to be a little land-heavy if you take a look. I saw a lot of whiteboard cards. That generally means lands when you're watching a Legacy match. Absolutely. Perhaps there's a window for Nathan to, to get in here. A lot of thinking going on here. He might want to start making use of that Lava Mancer, though, while he can as well. Like, I'm, I'm sure he will. There's a Tarmogoyf. Oh, this is so crushing because that Relic is doing a lot of work. Yeah, so... Oh, we uh, just saw the land. He's going to go for it. Yeah, so we know the Caracas is on top right now. Did not count at the Tarmogoyf. But Pyroblast now on the stack. Joe has the option to, as you mentioned, break the Relic, draw a card, get a fresh card, and can maybe hit a one. Or crack the Marsh Flats. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing he can do, he has a brainstorm there. Does he? he oh, wow. In his hand. I just happened to see well, it. I, the issue and here is if his hand's all land, he needs to do something to reset the top of the deck first because he'd much rather be drawing three cards he doesn't know when he knows the Caracas isn't going to help him. Yeah, so it looks like he's going to, he actually is more he's, keen on cracking, okay. on, on brainstorming pre fetch. So he's got two opportunities to hit a one. Yeah, I, I feel like I would be more inclined to fetch first, especially because Caracas is not even good. 
Like it's just a bad card in this I, matchup. I, I'm actually with you on that. Like I, I don't want the Caracas that bad, that badly. Uh, it's he can. It's not as if he needs the white mana from the Caracas. He's got a Marsh Flats in play. Yeah. Uh, and we've seen him. He has a, at least one Tundra in his hand as well. So. Yeah, and he's specifically chosen islands in. Uh, off of several fetch lands. So well, he kept a spell in his hand. He's going to fetch now, it looks like, and try and hit the random. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think I prefer doing this the other way around. Yeah, I agree. I mean, either way, you're looking at three fresh cards. Just the difference is that now he doesn't know one of them. Right. But I suppose... Well, you know, I suppose when his hand is that land heavy... I guess Joe's thinking is, I just want to definitely get rid of two of these lands. If the tar if the prior boss kills my counterbalance, that's not that big a deal. Mm -hmm. But if my hand is just filled with lands, that's much more problematic. So if that's his thinking, uh, I, I guess I can get behind it because he's hoping to draw spells over the next uh, two turns rather than be stuck with the brainstorm that's going to be delivering lands. So it was a Tundra on top. That is probably the worst thing that could have happened. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> another land. On the upside, and his relic will make that turn work not very threatening in the near future. And he uh, activates the relic, draws the tundra. What's that spell he kept? I Can can't quite see? see it. It's it's the last oh. card in his hand. Oh, we're gonna find out right now. It Snapcaster. Like Snapcaster. Mage. Okay, that's so a nice one. You're gonna see Snapcaster Brainstorm, maybe. Uh, I think that's his only spell, so that yeah, seems like it. Looks yeah. like it. Yeah, he's just whew, so well, flooded This explains right now. one of the reasons he would be very unkeen to pop that. Relic. Yeah. Ooh, I see a Terminus. I, do, I also see a Terminus, and it oh. appears that... I, I think that puts Joe in pretty good shape in general. Nathan's on low on cards. His creatures are already ineffective. By the time he actually musters a real threat, Joe will be able to Terminus with some kind of backup. So he kept the Terminus in hand here. Oh, no, he put one back. There he goes. He puts it on top. Sorry. That's interesting. I... I guess that's fine. I would almost be uh, kind of <laughs> yeah, to like, let it sit. Why the Snapcaster dying? Well, that guy's in play. We may pop our relic right now. No, that'd be terrible with the way our terminus position. Yeah. Oh, we may pop it on on his turn. Nathan's yeah. Turn. So he may be setting that up. The He's, the reason uh, I would consider popping the relic now and having put the terminus the second card down is that way your Snapcaster Mage is actually playing pretty good defense. Uh, your opponent can't attack into it, and the Grim Lava Mincer won't be able to kill it because there won't be any there cards. There won't be any cards, in yeah. Nathan's graveyard. And uh, no one wants to trade their 1 2 Tarmogoy for the 2 1 Snapcaster Mage. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't and seem like it's great. That's overall. probably the best Nathan would be able to do. So it looks like he's going to say, Crack the Relic. Oh, do we have. Okay. Yep, a response. Lava Mincer kills Snapcaster just like, oh man, I really, you know, it's a shame. Note that Joe decided to go for the upkeep here because he's pretty sure his opponent doesn't have a spell pierce now, and he doesn't want to risk him drawing one. Yeah, so there you have the terminus off the top, set up by that uh, that brainstorm, and the board is clear once again. Dun, Nathan dun, dun, dun. plays a uh, nimble mongoose, which is again very, very uh, unthreatening. If, if that's the word. It's not super effective. There's a portent, <laughs> the one portent in Joe's deck. I, I like the portent that I've seen in these lists. It's like a it neat way to trigger miracles. Uh, one's not going to gum you up too much, so... Right, I, I think... I, I haven't tried it myself, but it may be something I'd be willing to uh, give it a shot just because it seems like a fun card to... Just, oh, to, just to sure. try out, you know? It's different. I don't know that I've ever cast a portent, now that I think about it. Austin tweeted uh, that he considers the Omni deck a bad matchup. So, no, I imagine that. Uh, I, I think that's fair to say. After watching it transpire, he really needs a pyroblast, and his opponent has cabal therapies to remove them. So, that's tough. So there's that portent finishes resolving and upkeep, right? Untap Draw. upkeep draws yeah. card. That's the. Uh, Just making sure there's no stifles here. <laughs> yeah, the way the portent works there, and Nathan plays a scalding tarn, swings in for one with the nimble mongoose. Not so nimble. I guess Nimble isn't describing its power and toughness, though. We have another counterbalance, so that'll, again, just make life more complicated for Nathan if it resolves. Looks he can like hard cast a Force of Will if he has one. So. He has a Daze. That is not enough. That's interesting. Got a Daze and a Bolt. I, uh, I would classify those cards as uh, not great. Snapcaster Mage. We're going to see a Portent again? I, that's my guess. 
Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine he played Terminus here. <laughs> Not very afraid of the 1-1. One -one. I really like, you know, Joe's a very careful player here. He chooses to drop the Snapcaster Mage after the counterbalance, so he gets to free roll a shot at that uh, counterbalance, countering whatever might happen to it. Yeah, Days. Joe. Joe's going to pay one, not even going to look at the top of the deck. I like that. I like his moxie. And now, uh, he's bolt like, for right, Snapcaster. I'll, I'll try to kill it. And so he's like, so Snapcaster resolved then. Yeah. Is that right? I'm gonna okay. Important. And now you're going to lightning bolt in response to my trigger. That's cool. I'm just going to let it go. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I, I'm, I'm kind of curious about that, especially if you're going to portent anyway. Like, your opponent's not going to know what you're drawing since that card yeah, could be any point. You could have you know? just blind flipped a one there and stopped the bolt. Yeah. Especially, like, you could just shuffle as he is. Yeah. yeah. So, on the upside, it looks like those cards, the top of the card was a land, I think. Yeah, he, so. did, he didn't, stuff he didn't want, so. Uh, it, it wouldn't have saved the Snapcaster anyway. Yeah. So, Nathan. One of the situations where you don't want the top card to be a miracle here. He's tapped out, <laughs> wouldn't be able to cast it on the uh, the portent draw. You know, I don't Nathan's think he would mind team. drawing an Entreat the Angels that much against his Hellbent opponent, to be totally honest. Uh, well, I, I guess I Untap mean, he, he make a couple angels. Untap <laughs> do it. Yeah, I'm talking about he can't actually miracle it. That's yeah, no. I, yeah, I mean, so. it's, you know, it's kind of a stinger, but Entreat for two is uh, hey, just fine. Yeah. Entreat for four, you know, twice as good. But yep. Is it twice as good even, you know? I, I think it might be slightly better. Yeah, I was going to say, it might actually be more than It might be more like 2.7 times as good. Could something that about that. 2.69 maybe. Uh, uh, so, I don't, I don't want to hag over yeah, no. <laughs> So Jason, the Mind Sculptor, he's pretty good. Uh, against Fetchlands, I'm not sure if we're going to Fate Seal here. The Nimble Mongoose could jump to an alarming size thanks to Wasteland, Wasteland, Fetchland, Fetchland. <laughs> All they right. would need to draw is a single spell or another Fetchland to make his Nimble Mongoose a 3-3. All right, so Joe Lossette is absolutely flooded. <laughs> Two lands he was able to put back there. He may even still, he does, he still has another land in hand. Yeah, it's really hard to feel bad for the guy with Jason. No, I, 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 I guess if you're, in, <laughs> if, if you're like, well, the bad news is I have to be flooded. The good news is I have Jason counterbalance yeah. on the board. I'll take the, the flood. It's a poorly attended pity party for, for Joe yeah. Lissette. <laughs> Sorry, I, it's, my bias is coming through. Like, come on, can he just draw Brainstorm. Sensei's top and then entreat the angels? Brainstorm's a fine spell here. Nathan may even find himself suddenly gaining threshold. Yeah, I think uh, I think he's going to want to take out that Jace ASAP if he's able to, uh, even if it means just just wastelanding his own, uh, his own fetch lands. Andrew Ward asks, what's the reasoning for one port and several ponders versus the other way around in Miracles? And I actually think most don't run ponder. I think Joe is also running no ponders. Zero ponders, And yeah. it's because the ponders, while they help you set up Miracles, they do not help you trigger them very well. And you already have Brainstorms, which are excellent at the job. Jace is excellent at the job. Important, yep. uh, as far as triggering a Miracle goes, is better than ponders. So sorcery speed, one-drop cantrips, not that popular in Legacy and non-combo decks. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, the short version of it is to look at it and say ver Portent versus Ponder. Uh, Portent is is a Ponder that lets you set up the first draw of, during your opponent's turn. Yeah. You know, so you can set up a Miracle to be the top card that you, you know, the first card you draw of the turn. It happens to be your opponent's upkeep, and that way you can get set up the Miracle yeah. to happen during your opponent's turn. When your primary goal is setting up those Miracles, um, it, it's kind of interesting because a slow trip is actually much faster. <laughs> yeah, it, it works out better because, uh, you know, with a, if you say you, uh, you want to cast a Terminus, well, if you ponder, and you, if ponder into a Terminus, you can't cast the Terminus that turn, even if it's the card you draw off Ponder, because you've already drawn a card for the turn. But if it was important, you put the Terminus on top, you draw it during Nathan's turn, Terminus there. So it's all about the uh, trying to get that miracle off. Uh, thanks to John Barber, he noted that Joe actually already knew that card, it, so it wouldn't have been a blind flip. He just already knew it wasn't going to save a Snapcaster Mage. Oh, okay, okay. Which, good, good yep, point. I admittedly lost track of the turns on that one, so that's my, yeah. my bad, guys. So there's a Vendillion click, and uh, Surgical Extraction, blind flip, sees Counterspell, does not counter the Surgical Extraction. No. And that reveals Swords, Brainstorm, and if I'm Nathan, I'm thinking, Man, this isn't going anywhere good anytime soon. 
What is she extracting here? Um, oh, let's see. I think it's snap transformation, but I'm not sure. Nope, Terminus. It was Terminus. Okay, so okay. we see Nathan fears the Terminus here. He hopes to leave Joe without any real answers to Nimmo Mongoose. Uh, problem is, I don't even know if he needs him. Like, he's on 15, but he's going to draw so many cards turn after turn. He has Vendillion Cliff on defense right now. Yep, we're going to block. Yeah, just going to trade away uh, the Vendillion Cliff for the Nimble Mongoose, and I'm happy with that if I'm Joe. And I am Joe, just a different Joe. This game's going to take a couple turns to close out, but I think Joe has it pretty much on lock at this point. He's going to brainstorm here with Jace. As soon as he finds and treats, uh, it's just like, oh, I think he just, did he just find Baneslayer Angel? He did. Yes. <laughs> Loved seeing Baneslayer Angel in Legacy. He's not the only uh, Miracles player playing Baneslayer Angel. No, I, I have game. it in the board. Uh, okay. Reed Duke, uh, it's, again, I'm just playing Reed Duke's list, and he, uh, <laughs> he he mentions Baneslayer. He has played Baneslayer. I don't know if he had it with him in DC, but anyway, Baneslayer Angel is now on the yep. table. You know, my read on this game taking a while may have been wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ben uh, Angel isn't known for her slow work. No, not at all. <laughs> Looking down and seeing Jace the Mind Sculptor next to Bane Slayer, suddenly I'm thinking, what year is it? It feels like 2010 <laughs> standard. I mean, there oh, is a man. counterbalance and, uh, and a Tundra in view, so it's kind of waking me up back to reality. The counterbalance here, is playing like a reverse predict for Joe, basically. Yeah, this is what I'm getting. <laughs> he loses his Tundra <laughs> to that wasteland. Gotcha. Nathan making that play to make sure Joe gets one less angel than he might otherwise. Yeah, that's, that's, that seems good enough. Although, he has one additional angel in the form of Baneslayer that uh, Nathan's probably not thinking about, or wasn't thinking about. Yeah, that's a force of will. I'm calling it, guys. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Joe's got this match. Baneslayer angel just gained him five. Also knocked Nathan to 11. And... Uh, Since Adrian's not here, I'll just say it. It's all over but the crying. <laughs> the action gonna, actually dropped the force, the force of force will. will. That's kind of awkward. I'm sure Nathan's just thinking, oh, yeah, sweet. Force yeah, of will. Oh, good. Yeah, that's awesome. there it is. Yeah. There's the handshake. Nathan Grove scoops to uh, Joe Lost Set and yeah. his, uh, his miraculous recovery there. Oh, that was a match between two of the titans of Legacy, basically, uh, Miracles and Rug Delver. 